some people think about when I say don't manage coach, they think, oh yeah, 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 we should be, co I know, we should coach. I, I'm a leader, I should coach. I should coach my staff. I, I know what you mean. And they don't. They don't have a clue. So when I say we need a new way of thinking, I mean a truly new way of thinking. And let me give you a little bit of a s concept with it. I teach volleyball. I coach volleyball. It's one of the things I like to do. So I learn from other sports. I love taking from other sports and applying it to volleyball. And so one of the sports I like is football. And I look at the way quarterbacks throw a football. And I actually had a nice gentleman come in from Notre Dame who coaches, he doesn't coach at Notre Dame, but he coaches on his spare time high school football. Really good at it, specifically quarterbacks. So I had him come in and teach my girls how to throw a football. And I told my girls, hey, you'll love this because your dad and your siblings, especially if they're brothers, they're going to love it that you know how to throw a football like a football player. You're going to throw a football the same way all the quarterbacks in high school learn to throw a football. They said, so they're like, okay, yeah, go ahead, teach us. So we spent a whole practice on learning how to throw a football. That's what we did. I mean, we're sitting there with the net and we're throwing footballs. And other teams are looking at us like we're crazy. But look at this form and look at that form. Guess what? Throwing a football is the exact same motion that you should use for hitting a volleyball. And we do it twice in volleyball. We do it with spiking and we do it in serving twice, two times, two different te techniques we use in volleyball, I want them to use the exact same form. I want that left hand up pointing. I want you torquing your shoulders. I want you leaning back, making a bow and arrow with your body. That's a great bow and arrow, right? Look at that. I need a new way of thinking. I can't just get stuck in saying, well, it's volleyball. I can't look at other sports. I can't look at other things. I can't think of being the boss and thinking that's real life I need to think of other things. I need to think of different ways to do it. And so this might look, oh, look, she's coaching. I'm telling you to even think bigger than that. Think out of the box, whole new way of thinking. And I want you to really think about coaching. And I want you to think about coaching like sports do. And when I think about coaching, I think, oh, yeah, teamwork, but I have skills, goals. I have to help you get better at your skills. I have to communicate with you all the time. We collaborate. We research better ways to do it. I do film. I do creativity. I, I'm going to, I have true leadership, right? I have a head coach. Football coach, I love using college and pro sports. High school is the same too, though. Add that in there too. But in on college, what do I have? I have a head coach. I have assistant coaches that have responsibilities of mentoring and teaching and coaching and t helping uh, my team get better. And then what else do I have? I have players. And the players have to do the job, right? Players have to play. How about the best teams? And this is by Dave DeBusha. If you guys remember Dave DeBusha, old basketball professional player became a U.S. congressman, so hopefully he used the skills he learned in basketball when he became a congressman. I don't know that he did, but he says the best teams have chemistry. They communicate with each other, and they sacrifice personal glory for the common goal. So there are some things about when we think about coaching instead of managing that come into play, and when I think about chemistry, and I think about how they get along, Allen Iverson is a great example of where there was no chemistry. He even, he even tell, he told his coach, I don't want to practice. What's practice for? I'm here for game time. You're paying me for game time. Practice is a waste of time. Why? He was only thinking about himself. Practice isn't just for you. I took over as a head lector at my church, and I said, I'm going to have a practice session for all the lectors. And I had one lector that had been lecturing for 30 years. I don't need no stinking practice. I don't want to go to practice. And I had to tell him, I said, well, you're being kind of selfish. What do you mean? You don't think any of the other new lectors would benefit from your help, from your sharing, from your experience? Well, yeah. Well, then come to practice. Showed up. He thought, hey, it's all about me. I don't, I don't, it's not about anybody else. So why in the world would an organization, a professional basketball team, keep Allen Iverson on their team and not trade him? I think you've heard, maybe you've heard, maybe you don't, you don't co cover sports. I do. I love sports because it's such a great microcosm of our life. And I watch other sports, and they get rid of their stars if the stars are selfish. Why didn't they get rid of Allen Iverson? Because like we talked about in the last session, the, the organizers, the people behind it, the general managers, the owners, forgot their purpose. And they thought their purpose was making money. And Allen Iverson sold seats. And he sold shirts. Didn't win any championships. Forgot his purpose. Forgot his goals. So we want good chemistry. We want people that work together. We want a team. We want an actual team. In sports, you've got to have an actual team. You will bench a player 
that doesn't work well with the rest of the team. You will change, even if it's a star player, Allen Iverson being an exception, you'll trade them to another team. You'll bench them. You'll change their role if they hurt the chemistry of the overall team. Because you understand the overall team's goal is to win. 